It's humble service, humble giving of ourselves that fills us with joy. This last week we did a little fundraising day, we call it Giving Day at our, our grade school. And it's a fund that we do every year to help pay off the loan that we've done an amazing job of aggressively paying off the loan for the new building of the school. The, we have huge uh, new, new buildings that were built in the, uh, about 2016. Anyways, one of our fifth grade teachers decided, hey, talking to her class, she said, how about what if we all, all of you children, give a couple cents or a couple dollars and we all contribute to this giving day? And uh, one of the kids goes, well, what do we get out of it? And she said, well, the teacher says, I guess if you ask the principal, Sister Rayfield, maybe she'll, you know, let us have a free dress day. How many of you want that? How many of you would give if we get a free dress day? And basically all of the hands go up. And then she, the teacher says, well, don't you think we should just give to give? How special would you think the principal would feel if she heard that the fifth graders gave without expecting any rewards? And then she asked again after her little spiel, so how many of you are willing to give if we get nothing out of it? Or, <laughs> she said, how many of you would, would be willing to give only if we get something out of it? And that time only like three or four hands went up, you know? But all of us are like that, that child. And moments, in our worst moments, where we kind of expect to get something out of all that we do for our family, for our community, all that we do for the church. I had a, a friend of mine, actually a friend of mine, uh, I was talking to him over the phone, he, he lives in Texas, and he was saying, you know, I feel like I need to contribute more financially. My work is going well, but I don't want to give to my parish because I, I, you know, I don't want my money to just go to like artwork and stained glass windows or something. And I was like, you know that the Sunday collection is just for the daily operations, just to keep the lights on. Today I'm excited that uh, here we have our open house outside. Uh, just a little display of some of the things, a good majority of the things, ministries, outreach programs that we have here, ways that we as the St. Simon and Jude, daily, day in and day out, we, we do things for this community to, to educate people in the faith through our faith formation program or the Bible study that educates people. Currently, we're in the cycle of teaching church history. Uh, we have all kinds of efforts to, to pray for the people on 27th, pray with the people on 27th Avenue. We have service to the poor through St. Vincent Paul, a group of socially active seniors. It's an, we have over 50 ministries outside represented. These are some of the things that our daily, daily operations help sustain. And I'm extremely grateful that there's all these people out there willing to sit in the heat because they have found joy in service, in giving of themselves. I, uh, I really believe that this is something very simple, that the gospel is very straightforward today. That we can all say at the end of our life, no matter how much we give, no matter how heroic, we can only say, I've, I've simply done my duty. I've simply served. I've done what's been asked of me. I only do what Jesus wants. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's not Christian giving. It's not Christian charity. Because our model is Jesus. And to give like Him, we need to be receiving His grace. What, what Christ does, what He invites us to do is charity. And charity is a selfless love. And we can't do it without His grace. In the last couple of days, I had two weddings. And I love weddings. And you've probably heard me say before that people ask me sometimes, like, Father, is it sad doing weddings, you know, because... You can't get married. I, I find it so life-giving. I'm like, oh, thank God I'm not doing that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's a joke. I, I, I find so much joy in it because I see that what this couple does, they face each other 
and they say, I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, sickness and in health, to love you and honor you all the days of my life, as long as you do the same. No, they don't say that. It's just 100%. They tear their hearts out and say, here you go. And they replace their ego with that of their spouse. That's, that's a crazy heroic act of charity. I love you, period. Expecting nothing in return. Anything you give back is just a cherry. It's just a frosting on top. That's what Jesus does for us. He gives himself. His hands were nailed to the cross so that he couldn't take anything from us, but only give. And we are just unprofitable, ungrateful servants. We're only doing what is our duty. But weddings are the best parties in the world. There's so much joy. Last night, um, I went to one of the receptions, and uh, there were all these young couples. They, they did a little dance. Okay, so who's, who's been married less than 24 hours? So the, the couple that just got married got up and started dancing to the song. And then who's been married for less than a year? And then a, a couple couples got up. Who's been married less than five years? Another few. It was amazing, but I, all of a sudden there was a, a full dance floor with just young couples who had been married less than 10 years. And then came the older couples, which were numerous as well. That gives us hope. Especially today where we know that the birth rate is dramatically plummeting. Fewer couples getting married. Marriage is hard. Marriage is a real gift of yourself. It, it, it can only be done with charity, which is a grace from God, to give ourselves. And this is the joy of our life. It's contradictory to our, our logic because we get tired. The last month we've been preaching on live, grow, act. Because first, before we do anything, we have to be living the faith. If we're not praying, if we're not spending time listening for the voice of God through, through the guaranteed forms, which are revelation, you look, read through the scriptures, which are tradition, the sacraments, confession, the guaranteed encounters with Christ in the Eucharist, and the magisterium, listening and humbly submitting ourselves in, in, in religious obedience. We have to be immersing ourselves, living the faith in our private lives. Otherwise, no matter how much we say and do about our Christian faith, we're not giving Christian charity, which is a gift from God alone. And you can't, get, you can't continue giving if you're not receiving. So we have to live our faith. And we have to grow the faith. I think of this parish as a huge tree, an enormous tree that gives fruit, sustenance, it nourishes people. This is a huge tree that provides shade and shelter to so many in need. Especially through the community that is formed amongst humble servants. But that tree needs to be fed and nourished, sustained in order for it to stay healthy and continue to grow and continue to bear good fruit. Which is why in that second form of growing, this is what I want people to have in mind, especially when it comes to finances. We think that finances is just like a tip for a good homily or it's just what's going for the artwork of the church. But the staff here, there's many who uh, do so much to organize the work that's done in this community, and they don't uh, eat money. I mean, they don't, they don't eat for free. They, they, they need compensation. And, and then all the things that we do cost money. The printing of materials, the, the food that's given to the poor. It's amazing what's done here. And, I, and I'm, I'm so grateful that so many give generously and have kept this place growing. And I hope we continue that for years and years and years to come. And of course, we have to act on what we believe. We must live it. We must continue to the growth. And we must, live, we must act on our faith. Do deeds, good deeds. Even, even those who are homebound and bedridden, I've seen do charitable acts of mercy. One, through their spiritual acts of mercy, through their prayer, specifically for people, but also through their, their smiles, their generosity to those who are working hard to serve them. But all of us who are blessed with better health, how are we being the hands of Christ, the feet of Christ? How are we bringing good news to others? That's part of why we have the open house today. So you might be open to listen. If the Lord speaks to you, I hope you respond generously. Friends, we are, we are called to give without counting the cost.
for us the prayer of St. Francis says, or what's called the prayer of St. Francis. It's a, it's a very modern prayer, but it's a, it's a beautiful one. The prayer of peace is sometimes called. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace, not a human peace. There's a peace that can fuel people even when they're physically exhausted, even when they're emotionally exhausted, there is a peace that keeps us going strong. It's the Lord's peace. And you and I are called to be instruments, vessels of that peace, so that where there is injury, we bring pardon. Where there is hatred, we bring love, etc., etc. Because when we're feeling empty, surprisingly enough, it's when we give that we receive. You feel distant from God, give Him time through the prayer of scriptures, through the sacraments, etc. And you will receive. It's in giving that you receive. And I hope that as we continue to live as children before God, that we can be humble enough to give without expecting to be rewarded except for the one reward that lasts for eternity, which is God himself.